Oh, and it was a really interesting exercise because it actually made me really aware of the secret steps in things. Um, I mean, we've been doing cooking here for, I don't know whether it's a whole year or even longer, two years. Um, and I could never understand, because I like to cook, could never understand people who can't read recipes, just read the recipe and do it. Um, but this was really interesting because you realise there's a whole bunch of stuff that's not actually written in the recipe and it's just because of experience you know what that is. If you accidentally wrote, wrote down the wrong thing that was on the computer and then you go to put it in the cake, the cake can be wrong. So once as a class we had all made a banana cake. We took photos of the process. We had kids taking photos of each stage. So when we came back as a class, we printed them out and they had to sequence them in the right order. And this is where the students got to create their own algorithms. Um, using these algorithms, it was really good because you could see what the students knew and parts that they were missing. Um, a few students in their algorithms included those missing steps as well. What we found out was some children really knew those steps to make the algorithm and some students didn't know those steps. They then, as a group, had to collaborate and design their own cake recipe. Then they went back into the galley as a group and created that recipe. It really changed my thinking about stuff and for Tegan and I to take our hands off and let the kids in the year two threes to let them sink or swim with cake cooking and we couldn't even work out what the disaster was these Vesuvius cakes that caved in on themselves but the minute we tasted them we realised a tablespoon of carb soda was not going to be palatable. Um, you know great learning experience for the kids and great learning for us about, um, well, especially for me in leadership, it's around that we probably over scaffold kids, and there has to be a point where the scaffolds start to drop off and you get kids to actually pick it up. We had a few disasters, and that goes back to what I mentioned earlier about the formal measurements with a number of students not realising how the step-by-step -step process and how important each individual measurement was. So we had a few disasters but they learnt from those disasters so the next time around we did it the students were far more successful. And I think that failure actually embedded the importance of the learning. I think if I jumped in and rescued them I don't think their learning would have been as powerful. That you have to get the exact right amount of like sugar, cream, eggs, right, the right amount, otherwise it wouldn't be the right. It was hard as a teacher because you want them to be successful and you want them to have all the measurements correctly and it was really hard to walk around and you see a student holding um, one cup instead of half a cup and you try and say, oh, do you think you're holding the right cup there? And trying to make them make the right decisions rather than stepping in and going, oh, that's wrong. You can't always just do what you want. You have to follow the recipe. So using the digital technologies component meant that the students were encouraged um, to focus on those steps of the baking process rather than the end product. So if you can take those inferred steps and that inferred information and directly state it down, that's actually something that's required in the digital technologies curriculum. So taking those steps and using it is a part of coding later on down the track. The only gizmo that we used was um, a device to take photographs. Yeah, I mean we did do a little bit of um, ordering on a computer but, but a, a classroom teacher who had a camera and, and one computer in their classroom could do this.